So, spoiler warning, but this thing is pretty good. Originally, I rated it at about 8.5 to 9 or so on the super test, but now it's available on the common test, and tanks.gg has been updated with all the soft stats. So, alright folks, let us take a closer look at the 116F3, just to see how busted it is. Special tier 10 Chinese heavy tank, it comes with a preliminary premium tag, so that will be probably removed when this thing comes out, but based on the trend of this year with all the tier 10s and reward tanks, we're likely going to see this thing as a auction item or maybe assembly shop for the 116F3, like what they did with the 780. So siphon all the free XP and bonds back to Wargaming's vault practically for this thing. And it's worthwhile too, so it has a lot of armor. A lot. Especially for the hull front too. And no weak spot practically other than the commander cupola, but that is pretty small. So it's a very good breakthrough heavy tank that comes with a 130mm autoloader. That's not what I expected of a breakthrough. Yeah, it's a good for support, right? With an autoloader like the Kronwagen or T57 Heavy, but this thing has armor compared to the T57 Heavy and better hull armor than the Kronwagen, so pretty nuts. It doesn't have the DPM compared to the support heavy tanks, but it's like the Boresque. You don't need the DPM, you have the armor to protect you, and you're dumping out the shells too, which is pretty scary. <laughs> like all Chinese tanks or more than half of the Chinese tanks, they're all made up, so paper tank, yada yada, they're not real, especially with the incoming rocket boosters for this year's holiday ops, practically. But 130mm autoloader punches hard for the penetration. The same alpha as the WZ114, but it has a lot better DPM. Accuracy could be better, aim time could be better, but it's an autoloader, so give or take. 4-man crew, fits all the 5As or WZ111s, but let us take a look at the actual firepower of this thing. So, 130mm, 266mm of pin, which is pretty decent for standard shell of a 130. So usually it's about 250 or so, but decent. About 30 seconds of reload for the clip, and 5 seconds between each shot, 3 rounds in the clip, so, 5 seconds is not as bad as you would think. It is bad for a medium tank without armor. Yeah, that takes a while, and you'll be killed in that time frame. But this thing has armor. It can stand there and take the hits, like the Minotauro, the Italian tank to shores. So, it's not half bad. And this thing has better DPM than the IS-7, even with the autoloader. So, pretty decent. 0.4 accuracy with a 100% crew, could be better, and 2.78 seconds of aim time, could be better. It does have 8 degrees of gun depression, which is pretty nice. 20 elevation, also nice, so it could hold down for itself. And turret traverse is decent for a heavy tank, so not half bad, but let's take a look at the shell. So you can see, DPM comparison, yeah, IS-7 has less DPM. Don't know why the 60 TP is considered as a breakthrough heavy tank for some reason. They categorize that. Sus. Super sus. But obviously it's not as high of a DPM compared to the VZ55. So, small downside. Small. It has 3 rounds. The VZ has 2 rounds. Alright, AP shell. Uh, shell velocity is 950. It's not the worst, it's not the best, you could do with that, but just make sure you lead your shot. If you're close range fighting or face hugging, it doesn't matter that much, right? So, still decent AP round. APCR round is a lot faster, so that's nice. And goes up to 325mm of pin, so decent. I mean, it's not like the Yak Panzer E100's gold shell, so you'll still struggle with some heavily armored target, like itself, practically, but... 
eh, you're slinging gold at high armor targets. That's what you expect. You're not going to pin. <laughs> And high explosive is high explosive, so 65 millimeters of pin, more alpha. Shell velocity is slower by 20 meters per second. Yeah, you use it sometime for finish off low health targets, but yeah, usually with autoloaders, you don't want to carry high explosives. So kind of a uh, unnecessary choice, unless you want to meming with like three rounds of 130 high explosive. That's a meme. You could do that, but it's not effective. So usually, you don't low high explosive for support autoloaders like these two. You don't. Or even the Rhinoceronte. The Rhinoceronte. You don't do that. But uh, overall, on paper, it's not a half bad gun. So we have to take a look at the actual soft stats of this thing just to be sure. So as you can see, dispersion while moving is not great. And turret traverse is still okay at 0 0.15, so you could somewhat snapshot, but don't shoot the gun while moving. That is pretty bad. I mean, it's not as bad as something of a tremendously terrible vehicle like the WZ-114. It's not as bad. Ugh, 0 0.33. Especially with turret traverse. Holy god, that is terrible. So, yeah, it's not as bad as something like that. But it's closer to what I say, like the Char Future Project 4. Well, yeah, close enough, but still has better turret traverse dispersion. So it's not accurate while moving the turret or the hull, but still decent enough. Now let's compare this with something like the IS 7, just to be sure. Uh, not medium. Heavy tanks. Yeah. Holy crap, 0 0.06 for turret traverse dispersion? That is insane. So yeah, it's not as accurate while moving the turret or the hull. That is insane. What about the 277? Holy crap. Yeah, it's uh, snapshotting is a little bit more wonky with this thing. But it's an autoloader and you can put equipment on it. So that will help out tremendously. But yeah, that is the downside. Shell velocity. Another downside, but you can spam gold like any other scum, so <laughs> that's no problem. 42 rounds, that's fine for 130, so you have enough shells. Eh, module damage is 130, so nothing to compare there. It's not a bad gun. The only downside is dispersion. You can easily help that out with the new equipments too, so shouldn't be that big of a problem. Yes, it has a long intra-shell reload clip of 5 seconds between each shot that's fine you have armor so nice segue into the armor profile but this thing is pretty thick 2100 health could be better so it's more in line with a faster heavy tank than a slower heavy tank like the IS-4 but it has 195 at the hull front both for the upper plate and the lower plate 300 for the turret front, 120 for the hull sides, 180 for the turret sides, but it is pretty thick. Very thick. <laughs> it's like the E100, about 320 millimeters effective upper plate. Unangled. That is crazy. <laughs> that is insane. Middle plate or half of the lower plate, 195 to about 275 millimeters effective. Bottom, 60 millimeters, but it's a high angled. So it's about 200 millimeters effective, but you're going down into the ground. So if you're face hugging like this, yeah, it's not going to do. Now, if you're shooting at range, yes, yeah, so you can pin the lower plate more reliably, but it's a smaller target. If you hit here, it's still about 260 millimeters effective. So it's a thick, thick boy. The only downside to this armor is the small commander cupola, quote unquote. <laughs> and uh, if it's pointing your gun towards its gun barrel, so if you're leveled, it's a small target. Yes, it's only 120, only 120, yeah. Loader cupola is 325. <laughs> no, you're not getting me through that. It's 120, but it's a sliver, it's a pixel. You're not shooting there. There is, however, the hull 
roof right here, only 30 millimeter. So you could shot trap, supposedly, from the bottom of the cheeks into the hall roof. But that's a small target. Now, if you are face hugging, you could jam a shot and overmatch the hall roof if you're tall enough or have enough gun depression. But that's another big if. Very big if. So. Oh, God. Let's see. Gold shell from a 120 that has about 300 millimeters pin. 10% of the time, you'll go through the upper plate. About half of the time, you'll go through the middle of the plate. But if this thing is hauled down, yeah, you're no, no. <laughs> you could go through the turret cheeks if you're lucky with the high roll. But yeah, still 20% of the time, 15% of the time. No, okay. Side armor wise, you have side skirts covering up 120, so yeah. 300 millimeter pin, you only get through about 30% of the time into the side armor if it's side scraping. So this thing is way too goddamn strong. <laughs> Let's go back to about standard. Standard is like that much. Yeah, yeah, you know, 5% of the time go through the side armor. Now engine deck is a little bit exposed like the German designs, such as the Leopard prototypes or the AE phase, not the AE phase one, the Concept 1B has a elevated engine deck in the back, so somewhat able to shot at if you're side scraping, a little bit, but it's a small target. And if this thing is wiggle about, no, you're not shooting it there. So, thick boy, pretty thick. Now, it's not like IS-4 levels of armor at the sides, obviously, but still, that is very reliable. But the Commander Cupola is small. That is a small target. And if it's hauled down, it's even smaller with a freaking periscope blocking at the front. <laughs> The periscope will eat the shot, and you deal zero damage. You'll knock out the periscope, but you'll deal zero damage. So, the armor on this thing is pretty decent. Turret roof, 55. Engine deck, 25. Shoot at the engine deck if you're playing artillery, practically, but... I think the armor is more reliable at the front than the... than the... IS-7? I mean, the upper plate is very bouncy compared to the IS-7 too, but the IS-7 has a better turret, obviously. Mm, it's still good though, it is still really good. The health is a downside, of course, but you have a Commander Cupola weak spot, but that's nothing compared to the 5A, right? That is nothing compared to the double turreted or double cupola 5A. That is huge. That is like... Mount Rushmore or Mount Everest levels of huge compared to the 116F3. That is, you shoot there. No question about it, but this thing is a lot faster to wiggle about and be squirrely, obviously. But God, that is big. So armor wise, it's a, it's a very, very reliable armor. But let's see how the speed is for this thing. So it weighs about 58 tons. Not half bad, but about 14.5 horsepower per ton ratio, so decent. Top speed could be better, 35. Reverse is 20. Reverse speed is decent. Top speed could be helped out with the equipment, which you should. Hall traverse, about 24 degrees per second, which is all right for a heavy tank, but obviously you'll put something like the turbocharger or the new experimental turbocharger whatever the hell they call it, but mobility, improvement, blah, 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 yada, yada. But terrain resistance wise, it's a heavy, but hard terrain is actually not half bad. It's in line with some mediums like the E50 M's. Uh, let's see, let's compare with the IS-7. Always compare, with, well, it's better than IS-7, but you have less horsepower per time ratio. So theoretically, you'll keep up most of the time, but Holy crap, i7 has a lot of top speed. <laughs> You'll rev up at about the same rate, but the i7 will go higher to a better top speed in the long run, but... <laughs> God, that is a pretty good top speed. Well, that's why you ram with the i7. Uh, well, no comparison to something like the 277, that's... 
Not even close, yeah. You don't have as much or as better terrain resistance as the 277. What about the VZ55? It's also an autoloader. Uh, about the same as the VZ. That's nice. And about the same horsepower to ratio, just not as fast. Only 35, so... Yeah, the big downside for now is the top speed and dispersion. Holy crap, yeah, the, the dispersion is not great. But, eh, it has armor compared to the VZ. Quote-unquote. <laughs> a lot better tour armor, for sure. The VZ has a commander cupola that is somewhat prominent. Concealment, heavy tank, no concealment. Well... Better than something of a mouse, but that's not saying much, right? And view range is 400, which is surprisingly good for a tier 10 heavy tank. Russian-esque or Chinese-esque, so usually they're about 390, so 400 is actually not half bad. But let's take a look at field modifications as well as equipment. So let us do field mods first because they haven't added the experimental equipment to tanks.gg yet, so you cannot put... Actually, they did. Never mind. They don't have the pictures. I'm stupid. Uh, let's just do field mods first, because that unlocked the second slot for equipments. So, field modification. And let us do this in this tab, urgently, because it explains everything. So, breakthrough heavy tank. Do you want... Better hull traverse or suspension durability, or better terrain resistance. Now, it has been proven that with better terrain resistance, you get better top speed, or better effective hull traverse. So technically, would you want better terrain resistance, or better durability for your tracks? I think better terrain resistance. Yeah, always go with better mobility from TR. Alright, aiming or aim circle size, accuracy or aim time. It's already pretty crap <laughs> with the 0.4 accuracy. It is a close range fighting vehicle, so might as well go with better aim time. Yeah, better aim time, might as well. Yeah, better aim, 0.4 is all right. If you've been playing through with the D25T, 122s, at tier seven, at tier eight, you're already used to the 0.44 accuracy. And it doesn't matter much. When you're playing the Russian, <laughs> Russian accuracy broke. <laughs> Alright, view range or stun duration? Always view range. Just hide behind rocks. And stun duration doesn't affect that much. So if you get stunned by 10 seconds, it adds about one more second towards your stun duration. It's not that much. So better view range helps out tremendously by 12. That is, yeah, better view range. Always better view range. Oh, this one. Better top speed or better traverse and aim speed. Now, aim speed, you could be helped with the uh, aiming gears right here, but it is basically trading two field modifications for comparing top speed to aim circle size, practically. So for this vehicle, it's only 35 kilometers per hour top speed. So I think better top speed. Four is pretty dramatic like 10% more top speed, that is pretty dramatic, so put better top speed. Health or dispersion? You will lose 40 health, a big 40. Yeah, no, better dispersion all the way, especially with this gun, better dispersion. So, yeah, only 40 health, that's nothing, right? So, apply, and let's do this quickly. Or here so giving you better terrain resistance will give you better effective top speed as well yep uh we did oh they actually put everything right here nice so better top speed better dispersion so with all of these you go down to 0 0.24 so a little bit but now we do the fun stuff the equipments so for the first slot i think vents help out tremendously with everything so vents for the first slot Firepower, I selected firepower, so probably vertical stabilizer, especially with the moving stuff. Yeah, vertical stabilizer helps out tremendously, tremendously. So select firepower and select vertical stabilizer. And finally, let us put the final special experimental equipment. 
uh, it's not the fire control stuff, it's the mobility stuff. This thing also helps out with the top speed and dispersion. It's a go-go, it's no-brainer. It's so good. It's so good. Buffs up the top speed, buffs up the everything else. Holy crap, it's good. It's real good. It, it, there's no picture, but that doesn't matter. So, still, with all the equipments, with all the stuff ready, uh, let us put Brothers in Arms, just to be sure. And we do the other stuff. Brothers in Arms are more important, but 0.4 accuracy. It's a close range fighting vehicle, so not half bad, but holy crap, you really need the vertical stabilizer and the new tier 3 uh, mobility stuff, mo mobility improvement system. Yeah, whatever the hell that thing is. So that helps out tremendously with the top speed. Tremendously with the effective top speed and traverse you have a little bit better DPM now the only downside is um, You're not as fast still compared to something like the IS-7 or the VZ-55 But you have a little bit more armor than the VZ-55 better view range now, too, so How much would I rate this thing? Originally, I rated this thing at 8.5 depending on armor <laughs> 9 if it's a premium it's not likely going to be a premium, but uh, it is a nasty autoloader. They nerfed it though, so they nerf. Yeah, they nerf from 3.75 uh, seconds between each shell to 5. So, um, also nerfed the aim time too. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, they did not nerf the mobility. Did not nerf the armor. Top speed is still kind of crap originally too. So. How much would I rate this thing? I mean, it's more consistent in terms of armor. Yes, it doesn't have the DPM like a support heavy tank, like the Kronwagen or the T-57 heavy, but that doesn't matter. You have the armor to help you out during those situations. It's how broken the Kronwagen is. Kronwagen doesn't have the armor for the hull. That doesn't matter, just hide the hull with the gun depression. And DPM has been somewhat nerfed as well, but it's still good. 2,700 with all the equipments, but holy crap, that just made me realize how good the new experimental equipment is. Like, this thing is insane. This thing is alright. It's like good enough, but this thing is pretty good, especially on this vehicle. You get engine power boost, you get dispersion buff. Which is exactly what this vehicle needs. This thing is so good. Um, 8.5 still. It's still very good. Still super oppressive if played right. Imagine a platoon of three of these. Holy crap. Nine rounds of the 130. Nuts. 4,500 damage potential from three vehicles. And they have armor to run away, to back away. Nuts. Nuts, really nuts. Three vehicles, like three platoon of these? That's even scarier than a three-man platoon of the 726 or 279 early. I think three-man platoon of this thing is a lot scarier in terms of burst damage than a chieftain hybrid platoon. Maybe. But still, it has armor, holy crap. Yeah, 8.5, definitely. If it's a premium, holy crap, 9. 9.25. <laughs> Maybe even a 10. If it doesn't have the commander cupola weak spot, or the the lower, lower, lower plate, yeah, maybe like a 10, but... Or if it has better dispersion, and better top speed, but... It's bruh, it, it, bruh. It's good. <laughs> it's really good. Well, there you go, folks. Um... Assembly shop, make this thing happen. I have a lot of bonds, I have a lot of free XP, so don't waste your money on puny KV-5s or, I don't know, Synlax, uh, STR, oh, they don't even have it in the, <laughs> they don't even have it on the common test, so don't waste your bonds on KV-5s or Tiger 131s or STRV-81s, garbage. Save it, <laughs> save all your bonds for assembly shop. With the 116 F3, you will be ple uh, pleasantly happy surprise with this vehicle, I think. 
especially if you save up for the experimental equipment like the super turbocharger or mobility improvement blah blah blah, blah whatever the, what the hell they're calling it but holy crap 8.75 there we go folks final score 8.75 Oh, well, thank you, thank you, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. It's a hell of a lot better than a assembly shop 780. That's for sure. <laughs> well, they might give it a special skin too. Then it's like a nine or something, but 8.5 out of 10. So, thank you guys for watching again, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.